In Memoriam A. H. by Maurice Baring. Read for LibriVox.org by Emma Charlotte. 1915 to 1918. Entry Apollonto. Phyllis Apopatridos Ais. Oberon Herbert. Captain Lord Lucas, R.F.C. Killed November 3rd, 1916. Nomate Vain. Atrieto High. The wind had blown away the rain that all day long had soaked the level plain against the horizon's fiery rack. The sheds loomed black and higher in their tumultuous concourse met the streaming clouds, shot riddled banners wet with the flickering storm, drifted and smouldered warm with flashes sent from the lower firmament, and they concealed, they only here and there through rifts revealed, a hidden sanctuary of fire and light, a city of chrysolite. We looked and laughed and wondered, and I said, that orange sea, those oriflammes outspread, were like the fanciful imaginings that the young painter flings, upon the canvas bold such as the sage and the old make mock at saying it could never be and you assented also laughingly i wondered what they meant that flaming firmament those clouds so grey so cold so wet so warm so much of glory and so much of storm the end of the world, or the end of the war, remoter still to me and you, my friend. Alas, it meant not this, it meant not that. It meant that now the last time you and I should look at the golden sky and the dark fields large and flat and smell the evening weather and laugh and talk and wonder both together. The last, last time we never more should meet in France or London street or fields of home. The desolated space of life shall never more be what it was before. No one shall take your place. No other face can fill that empty frame. There is no answer when we call your name. We cannot hear your step upon the stair. We turn to speak and find a vacant chair. Something is broken which we cannot mend. God has done more than take away a friend in taking you for all that we have left is bruised and irredeemably bereft. There is none like you, yet not that alone do we bemoan. But this, that you were greater than the rest, and better than the best. O liberal heart fast rooted to the soil, O lover of ancient freedom and proud toil, Friend of the gypsies and all wandering song, the forest's nursling and the favoured child of woodlands wild, O oh, brother to the birds and all things free, captain of liberty, deep in your heart the restless seed was sown, the vagrant spirit fretted in your feet. We wondered, could you tarry long? And brook for long the cramping street? Or would you one day sail for shores unknown And shake from you the dust of towns And spurn the crowded marketplace And not return? You found a sterner guide. You heard the guns. Then to their distant fire Your dreams were laid aside. And on that day you cast your heart's desire Upon a burning pyre. You gave your service to the exalted need 
until at last from bondage freed, at liberty to serve as you loved best, you chose the noblest way, God did the rest. So when the spring of the world shall shrive our stain, after the winter of war, when the poor world awakes to peace once more, after such night of ravage and of rain, you shall not come again. You shall not come to taste the old spring weather, to gallop through the soft untrampled heather, to bathe and bake your body on the grass, we shall be there, alas, but not with you, when spring shall wake the earth, and quicken the scarred fields to the new birth, our grief shall grow, for what can spring renew, more fiercely for us than the need of you? That night I dreamt they sent for me and said that you were missing, 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 dead. I cried when in the morning I awoke, and all the world seemed shrouded in a cloak. But when I saw the sun, and knew another day had just begun, I brushed the dream away, and quite forgot the nightmare's ugly blot. So was the dream forgot, the dream came true, before the night I knew, that you had flown away into the air, forever, then I cheated my despair, I said, that you were safe, or wounded, but not dead, alas, I knew, which was the false and true, and after days of watching, Days of lead, there came the certain news that you were dead. You had died fighting, fighting against odds. Such as in war the gods, ethereal dared when all the world was young. Such fighting as blind Homer never sung, nor Hector nor Achilles never knew, high in the empty blue. High, high above the clouds, against the setting sun, the fight was thought, and your great task was done. Of all your brave adventures, this the last, the bravest was and best. Meet ending to a long embattled past, this swift, triumphant, fatal quest. Crowned with the wreath that never perisheth, And diadem of honourable death, Swift death of flame with offering supreme, And mighty sacrifice, More than all mortal dream, A soaring death, and near to heaven's gate, Beneath the very walls of paradise, Surely with soul elate, you heard the destined bullet as you flew, and surely your prophetic spirit knew that you had well deserved that shining fate. Here is no waste, no burning might have been, no bitter aftertaste, none to censure, none to screen, nothing awry, nor anything misspent, only content, Content beyond content, which hath not any room for betterment. God, who had made you valiant, strong and swift, and maimed you with a bullet long ago, and cleft your riotous ardour with a rift, and checked your youth's tumultuous overflow, gave back your youth to you and packed in moments rare and few, achievements manifold, and happiness untold, and bade you spring to death as to a bride, in manhood's ripeness, power and pride, and on your sandals the strong wings of youth, he let you leave a name, 
to shine on the entablatures of truth forever, to sound forever in answering halls of fame. For you soared onwards to that world which rags of clouds like tattered flags. Concealed, you reach the walls of chrysolite, the mansions white, and losing all, you gained the civic crown of that eternal town, wherein you passed a rightful citizen of the bright commonwealth ablaze beyond our ken. Surely you found companions meet for you in that high place. You met there face to face those you had never known, but whom you knew, knights of the table round, and all the very brave, the very true, with chivalry crowned. The captains rare, courteous and brave beyond our human air. Those who had loved and suffered overmuch, now free from the world's touch. And with them were the friends of yesterday, who went before and pointed you the way. And in that place of freshness, light and rest, where Lancelot and Tristram vigil keep over their king's long sleep, surely they made a place for you, their long expected guest, among the chosen few, and welcomed you, their brother and their friend, to that companionship which hath no end. And in the portals of the sacred hall, you hear the trumpets call, at dawn upon the silvery battlement, re-echo through the deep, and bid the sons of God to rise from sleep, and with a shout to hail, the sunrise on the city of the grail, the music that proud Lucifer in hell, missed more than all the joys that he forwent. You hear the solemn bell at vespers when the oriflammes are furled, and then you know that somewhere in the world that shines far off beneath you like a gem, they think of you, and when you think of them, you know that they will wipe away their tears and cast aside their fears, that they will have it so and in no other wise, that it is well with them because they know with faithful eyes, fixed forward and turned upwards to the skies, that it is well with you, among the chosen few, among the very brave, the very true. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Diffugere Neves, 1917, by Maurice Baring, read for LibriVox.org, by Peter Yearsley. To J. C. S. The snows have fled, the hail, the lashing rain, before the spring. The grass is starred with buttercups again, the blackbirds sing. Now spreads the month, that feast of lovely things we loved of old. Once more the swallow glides with darkling wings against the gold. Now the brown bees about the peach trees boom upon the walls, and far away beyond the orchard's bloom the cuckoo calls. The season holds a festival of light. For you, for me, the shadows are abroad. There falls a blight on each green tree, and every leaf unfolding, every flower, Brings bitter mead. Beauty of the morning and the evening hour Quickens our need. All is reborn, but never any spring Can bring back this, nor any fullness of midsummer Bring the voice we miss. The smiling eyes shall smile on us no more, The laughter clear too far away On the forbidden shore we shall not hear. 
Bereft of these until the day we die, we both must dwell alone, alone and haunted by the cry, Hail and farewell. Yet when the scythe of death shall near us hiss through the cold air, then on the shuddering marge of the abyss they will be there. They will be there to lift us from sheer space and empty night, and we shall turn and see them face to face in the new light. So shall we pay the unabated price of their release, and found on our consenting sacrifice their lasting peace. The hopes that fall like leaves before the wind, the baffling waste and every earthly joy that leaves behind a mortal taste the uncompleted end of all things dear the clanging door of death forever loud with the last fear haunt them no more without them the awakening world is dark with dust and mire yet as they went they flung to us a spark a thread of fire to guide us while beneath the sombre skies faltering we tread until for us like morning stars shall rise the deathless dead end of poem this recording is in the public domain julian grenfell by morris baring read for LibriVox.org by peter yearsley because of you we will be glad and gay Remembering you, we will be brave and strong, and hail the advent of each dangerous day, and meet the last adventure with a song. And, as you proudly gave your jewelled gift, we'll give our lesser offering with a smile, nor falter on that path where, all too swift, you led the way, and leapt the golden stile. Whether new paths new heights to climb you find or gallop through the unfooted asphodel we know you know we shall not lag behind nor halt to waste a moment on a fear and you will speed us onward with a cheer and wave beyond the stars that all is well end of poem this recording is in the public domain Pierre by Morris Baring, read for LibriVox.org by Peter Yearsley. I saw you starting for another war, the emblem of adventure and of youth, so that men trembled, saying, He forsooth has gone, has gone, and shall return no more. And then out there they told me you were dead, taken and killed. How was it that I knew whatever else was true that was not true and then i saw you pale upon your bed scarcely two years ago when you were sent back from the margin of the dim abyss for death had sealed you with a warning kiss and let you go to meet a nobler fate to serve in fellowship o oh, fortunate to die in battle with your regiment end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Icarus by Maurice Baring Read for LibriVox.org Here fell the daring Icarus in his prime, He who was brave enough to scale the skies, And here bereft of plumes his body lies, Leaving the valiant envious of that clime. O rare performance of a soul sublime, That with small loss such great advantage buys, Happy mishap fraught with so rich a prize, That bids the vanquished triumph over time, So new a path his youth did not dismay, His wings, but not his noble heart, said nay, He had the glorious sun for funeral fire, he died upon a high adventure bent. The sea his grave, his goal the firmament. Great is the tomb, but
but greater the desire. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Epitaph by Morris Baring, read for LibriVox.org, by Jonathan Paul Arnold. Here murdered by the frenzied, not the free, lies the latest monarch of the star-crossed line. Anointed emperor by right divine, from Arctic ice fields to the Aral Sea, from Warsaw to the walls of Tartary. His country's travail claimed a high design. Too stubborn to respond, he shrank supine before the large demand of destiny. Bereft of crown and throne and hearth and name, grief lent him majesty and suffering, gave him a more than regal diadem. His people kissed the desecrated hem, of robes not now of splendour but of shame, and knelt before their undiminished king. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. August 1918 by Maurice Baring, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. August 1918, in a French village. I hear the tinkling of the cattle bell in the broad stillness of the afternoon. High in the cloudless haze, the harvest moon is pallid as the phantom of a shell. A girl is drawing water from a well. I hear the clatter of her wooden shoon, two mothers to their sleeping babies croon, and the hot village feels the drowsy spell. Sleep, child, the angel of death, his wings has spread. His engines scour the land, the sea, the sky, and all the weapons of hell's armory are ready for the blood that is their bread. And many a thousand men tonight must die, so many that they will not count the dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Vita Nuova by Morris Baring, read for LibriVox.org, by Jonathan Paul Arnold. I watched you in the distance, tall and pale like a swift swallow in a pearly sky. Your eyelids drooped like petals wearily, your face was like a lily of the vale. You had the softness of all summer days, the silver radiance of the twilight hour, the mystery of bluebell-haunted ways, the passion of the white syringa's flower. I watched you, and I knew that I had found the long-delaying, long-expected spring. I knew my heart had found a tune to sing, that strength to soar was in my spirit's wing. That life was full of a triumphant sound, that death could only be a little thing. Omega Kala Ariessa I saw you by the summer candlelight. You put to shame the sparkle of the gems, the lights, the flashing of the diadems, the moon and all the stars of summer night. I saw you in the radiant morning hour. You put to shame the white rose and the red. Your chiselled lips, your lovely little head, were fairer to the petals of a flower. And on the shaven surface of the lawn, you moved like music, and you smiled like dawn. The leaves, the flowers, the dragonflies, the dew. Beside you seemed the stuff of coarser clay, and all the glory of a summer day, a background for the wonder that was you. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Italy by Maurice Baring Read for LibriVox.org The almond trees of Tuscany in flower, Narcissus and the tulip growing wild, White oxen and like a lily undefiled, Beyond the misty plain the marble tower, The roses and the corn upon the hill, The Judas tree against the solid blue, The fireflies and the downy owls to woo, the Aziola, Shelley, plaintive still, the lisp of blaze, phosphorescent foam, and Venice like a bubble made of dew, a shell transfigured with the rainbow's hue, the apian way beneath a sullen sky, the shepherd's pipe is like a seagull's cry, 
and in a silver rift eternal roam end of poem this recording is in the public domain Seville by Maurice Baring read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. The orange blossoms in the Alcazar, where roses and syringas are in flower, the blinding glory of the morning hour, the eyes that gleam behind a twisted bar, the woman on the balconies, a smile, the barrel organs and the blazing heat, the awning hanging high across the street, a dark mantilla in a sombre aisle, a fountain tinkling in a shady court, the gold arena of the bull ring's feast, the coloured crowd acclaiming perilous sport, the sudden silence when they hold their breath, while the torero gently plays with death and flicks the horns of the tremendous beast. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Greece by Marie Sparing. Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. The spring had scattered poppies on the land. The spring was saying her secret to the breeze. In the translucent shallows of green seas, a fisherman a trident in his hand was casting shining fishes to the sand and wading in the water to his knees and still i hear the crickets and the bees the hidden hoofs the ringing saraband i see the temples above the breaking foam the pillars pink as dawn in the silver dust the parthenon at sunset large and dim smouldering against the purple mountain's crust and far away on the ocean's blazing rim the phantom ship that brought ulysses home end of poem this recording is in the public domain russia by marie sparing read for LibriVox.org by melanie t what can the secret link between us be why does your song's unresting ebb and flow speak to me in a language that i know why does the burden of your mystery come like the message of a friend to me why do i love your vase of corn or snow the tears and laughter of your sleepless woe the murmur of your brown immensity i cannot say I only know that when I hear your soldiers singing in the street, I know it is with you that I would dwell. And when I see your peasants reaping wheat, your children playing on the road, your men at prayer before a shrine, I wish them well. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A June Night in Russia by Maury Sparing Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. A concert. Hark to the prelude's opening bar, Played by the sheep bells tinkling on the hill, Dogs bark and frogs are croaking near the mill, The watchman's rattle beats the time afar. Like water bubbling in a magic jar, The nightingale begins a liquid trill, another answers and the world's so still you'd think that you could hear that falling star i scarcely see for light the stars that swim aloof in skies not dark but only dim the woman's voices echo far away and on the road two lovers sing a song they sing the joy of love that lasts a day the sorrow of love that lasts a whole life long. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Harvest in Russia by Maury Sparing. Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. 
The breeze has come at last, the day was long, and in the lustrous air the dark bats fly, and hark, it is the reapers passing by. I hear the burden of their peaceful song, a voice intones, and swift the answering throng. Take up the theme and build the harmony, the music swells and soars into the sky, and dies away intense and clear and strong. Now through the trees the stately shapes I see, of women with the attributes of toil, calm in their sacerdotal majesty, and backwards, through the drifting mist of years, I see the festal rites that bless the soil, as old as the first drop of mortal tears. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dostoevsky by Maurice Baring, read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. You healed the sore, you made the fearful brave, they bless you for your lasting legacy, the balm, the tears, the fragrant charity, you sought and treasured in your living grave, the gifts you humbly took you greatly gave, for solace of the soul in agony when through the bars the brutal passions pry, and mock the bonds of the celestial slave. You wandered in the utmost abyss, and there, amidst the ashes and the dust, you spoke no word of anger or of pride, you found the prince of steps divine to kiss, you looked right upwards to the stars, you cried, Hosanna to the Lord, for he is just. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Beethoven by Maurice Baring Read for LibriVox.org More mighty than the host of mortal kings I hear the legions gathering to their goal The tramping millions drifting from one pole The march the countermarch, the flank that swings. I hear the beating of tremendous wings, the shock of battle and the drums that roll, and far away the solemn belfries toll, and in the field the careless shepherd sings, there is an end unto the longest day. The echoes of the fighting die away, the evening breeze a benediction mild. The sunset fades, there is no need to weep. For night has come, and with the night is sleep. And now the fiercest foes are reconciled. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mozart by Maurice Baring Read for the .org. The sunshine and the grace of falling rain, the fluttering daffodil, the lilt of bees, the blossom on the boughs of almond trees, the waving of the wheat upon the plain, and all that knows not effort, strife, or strain, and all that bears the signature of ease, the plunge of ships that dance before the breeze, the flight across the twilight of the crane, and all that joyous is, and young and free, that tastes of morning in the laughing surf, the dawn, the dew, the newly turned up turf, the sudden smile, the unexpressive prayer, the artless art, the untaught dignity, you speak them in the passage of an air. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Wagner by Maurice Baring, read for LibriVox.org by Emma Charlotte. O oh, strange awakening to a world of gloom, and baffled moonbeams and delirious stars. 
of souls that moan behind forbidden bars, and waving forests swept by wings of doom, of heroes falling in unhappy fight, and winged messengers from Ares dim, and mountains ringed with flame, and shapes that swim in the deep river's green translucent night. O restless soul, for ever seeking bliss, thirsty for ever and unsatisfied, whether the woodland starts to the echoing horn, or dying Tristram moans by shores forlorn, or Siegfried rides through fire to wake his bride, and shakes the whirling planets with a kiss. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Shelley by Maurice Baring, read for LibriVox.org. Singer of cloud and star and rushing stream, let me bring but one garland to thy shrine, for when a boy I drank of the dews divine that in thy rainbow-coloured chalice gleam, I scaled the silver ladder of thy dream, and dizzy with the wonder of that wine, I heard the song and saw the eyes that shine unveiled within the sanctuary supreme. Then, like Actaeon, I became the prey, the hunted quarry of remorseless hounds. Hark! In the distance I can hear them bay, but in my heart the vision and the voice endure, and though they slay me, I rejoice. I saw that light, I heard those starry sounds. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Phaedra by Maurice Baring Read for LibriVox.org by Jonathan Paul Arnold Her gesture is the soaring of a hymn, Her voice has robbed the spoil of Hebla's bees, And like the frozen music of a frieze, Calm as she moves majestic every limb. Clear as a crystal beaker's sounding rim, Her heart gives voice to sobbing melodies, And her frame trembles, swept by passion's breeze, And sultry clouds her blazing eyes bedim. A fairy caught in her own fatal snare, A wounded eagle struggling to be free, Whose kingdom was the snow and the sun's flame, More queenly than all empresses is she. Discrowned, albeit, defeated and in despair, the stricken lily puts the rose to shame. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Wounded by Morris Baring. Read for LibriVox.org by Jonathan Paul Arnold. The wounded lion grown upon the plain. And one there is whom it is vain to lift. So give him water, it is the last gift, And very soon he shall not thirst again. All white and gold the chief with a troop of horse Trots by, the soldier opens smiling eyes, And at the latest gasp of life he cries, Long live, with all his feeble flickering force. Before he said his say he died content, And we, the wounded on life's battlefield, Enrolled and sent to war to fight and die. When conquered by our mortal wound, we cry, Long live, obedient to our sacrament, When God, with all his universe, rides by. Manchuria, 1904 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sonnets 1913-1914 by Maurice Baring Read for LibriVox.org by Emma Charlotte 1. I saw you smiling over broken flowers Yourself a flower unbroken and more rare Than petals that make sweet the moonlit air And load with scent the summer's golden hours Your perfect head the ripple of your hair, like the soft sun that shines through April showers, 
leans from a fairyland of twinkling towers and beckons me to an enchanted stair. Your eyes, your eyes divide me from my sleep. The echo of your laughter makes me weep. You fill the measureless world, you frailest thing. And in the silence of my deepest dream, your beauty wanders like a whispering stream and brushes past me like an angel's wing. Two. Tonight, the thoughts of you drift round my bed like thistle down. I weave them into rhymes. And as I fall to sleep, I hear their chimes building sweet music high above my head and prayers and poems all in praise of you and happy in my fading dream i say there will be something ready with the day to send to her to speak for me to sue but when the morning comes the nimble words have fled into the air like frightened birds that answer my soft whistle with a scream and only the recalcitrant thoughts remain, the baffled blind desire to find again the accents that were docile in my dream. 3. I think God made your soul for better things than idly laughing with the noisy crew. I think he meant the spirit that is you to soar above the world with silver wings to hear the music of celestial strings, to keep the flame within you always true unto your own high pole and pure as dew, the fountain that within you sometimes sings. I think you are an exile in the noise of busy markets, alien to the toys that dazzle others, firing them with greed. And, like a seagull, lost upon the land, you long for the large breakers in the sand, the strong salt air, the surf, the drifting weed. For the world was waiting for the thunder's birth, today, and cloud was piled on sullen cloud, then strong and straight and clean and cool and loud the rain came down and drenched the stifling earth the heavy clouds have lifted and rolled by the riotous wet leaves with music ring and how the nightingale begins to sing and tender as a rose leaf is the sky I wonder if some day this stifling care that weighs upon my heart will fall in showers. I wonder if the hot and heavy hours will roll away and leave such limpid air and if my soul will riot in the rain and sing as gladly as that bird again. 5. I picked this cornflower in the rustling rye, these briar roses from a luscious hedge, this purple iris in the woodland sedge. It was the quaver of the dragonfly, dropped like a piece of azure from the sky, that led me to that pool amongst the trees, and there I lay and listened to the bees, and murmured sadly to myself, Goodbye. Goodbye. These perished petals that I send will tell you that this truly is the end. Goodbye to you and to the golden hours. These briar roses grew beside the stream. No, no. I shall not send you faded flowers. I need them for the grave of my lost dream. Sosnovka, June 1914. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
1914 to 1915. Elegy on the Death of Juliet's Owl by Morris Baring, read for LibriVox.org by Jonathan Paul Arnold. Juliet has lost her little downy owl, the bird she loved more than all other birds. He was a darling bird, so white, so wise, like a monk hooded in a snowy cowl, with sunshy scholar's eyes. He hooted softly in diminished thirds, and when he asked for mice, he took refusal with silent pride, and never pleaded twice. He was a wondrous bird, as dignified as any diplomat that ever sat by the round table of a conference. He was delicious, lovable and soft. He understood the meaning of the night, and read the riddle of the smiling stars. When he took flight, and he roosted high aloft, beyond the shrubbery of the garden fence, he would return to seek his safer bars, all of his own accord, and he would plead forgiveness for the trouble in the search, and for the anxious heart he caused to bleed, and settle once again upon his perch, and utter a propitiating note, and take the heart of Juliet by his pretty winning ways. He was the art of pleasing without effort easily. His fluffy throat, his sage round eye, sad with old knowledge, bright with young amaze. Where are they now? Ah, where? Perchance in the pale halls of Hecate, or in the poplars of Elysium, he wanders careless and completely free. But in the regions dumb, and with the pallid air, he will not find a sweet caressing hand like Juliet's. Not in all that glimmering land shall he behold silver planet rise, as splendid as the light of Juliet's eyes. Therefore in weeping with you, Juliet, oh, let us not forget, to drop with sprigs of rosemary and rue, a not untimely tear upon the bier, of him who lost so much in losing you. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Le Prince Errant by Morris Baring Read for LibriVox.org by Jonathan Paul Arnold I am the prince of unremembered towers, destroyed before the birth of Babylon, and I was there when all the forest shone. While pale Medea culled her deadly flowers, I heard the iron weeping of the king, when Orpheus sang to life his buried joy, and I beheld upon the walls of Troy the woman who made of death a little thing. I heard the horn that shook the mountain tall, when Roland lay a-dying, and the call that fevered Tristram whispered o'er the sea, and brought Isolt of Cornwall to his side. I saw the queen of Egypt like a bride go glorious to her dead Mark Antony. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of poems, 1914 to 1919, by Morris Baring.